What's up, everybody? Welcome to Poots Garage. We're at it again. We're, uh, let's have a drink with me. Before we get started, I just want to say uh, thank you, everybody, all my subscribers, and any newer people that might happen to be watching this. But uh, our channel is growing pretty good here in the last uh, few weeks. So I just want to remind everybody to please like, comment, and subscribe. And the most important thing right now is to Sorry if I'm shaking this camera, I'm not used to holding the camera. The most important thing right now is to uh, watch the video for as long as you can possibly manage to see my ugly face. So uh, that's the number one thing I need right now. So just trying to get them hours up. Uh, yeah, uh, let's get going. Well, to start off here, we are doing one of these wave lines. Uh, yeah, we're doing another seltzer. Uh, I had a case of these a while back but it wasn't the seltzer it was actually a, a lemonade they made and with that electrolytes and all that stuff it's actually pretty good stuff I'm, I'm kind of a fan of of these so who makes it hold on I'm gonna go off oh there's the shilling they're good at the making the, the the hard ciders and stuff so let's get started Not bad, uh, sorry, for the seltzers, not my favorite seltzer. I'm preferring the Corona seltzer, maybe the, afraid to say it, but those uh, White Claws are pretty good, so drinkable though. So for today's video, I'm obviously not sitting down like I have in the last few, so I figured we'll just kind of go for a walk and show you some things that are going on around the property. Uh, these are the things that are keeping me from making the videos I really want to do, which is the automotive type stuff and a little more fun stuff. But uh, let me spin the camera around on you. So this is my new driveway. I don't know if anybody knows from previous videos, but before my driveway came in here and then stopped right right oh actually it was way up here it stopped right about midpoint of my truck there and that was it It was just a little l-shaped and it was actually i think the width is about the same but the width at the entrance there was a little narrower so widening everything and then we have opened it up so i can pull in and pull out uh the fence had to be re-leveled i put in this border the thing that's taking the most time is Filling in all these edges once we're done. It's all that finish work, you know. But everything looks pretty good. And then, like, this here had a huge pile of sod that I had dug out. So uh, that's what I bought that rototiller for, was to chop that all up. Actually, piles of sod like that. It was all over here, too. So chopped all that up and re-spread it around, filled in the low spot that was over here before. And now we are looking pretty good. Um... This sod over here, I've pretty much used everything that I need to out of there. So I'm going to actually pull all that out and we'll uh, redistribute it out in the back. Probably dump it out in the racetrack just to make some, some jumps or something for, for future car beatings. Just going to walk us over here to the uh, other side of the house here so we can see the other part of the driveway expansion project i guess you could call it i don't know i got neighbors walking on the road too so i feel kind of weird walking around holding the camera up and just trying to get comfortable with this thing i guess we're in the clear so on this side my road previously came through those gates and it stopped. Ooh, got a kitty sighting. Hold on, kitty break. Meow. No, look at the camera. There you go. That's my deaf kitty, Willow. She's a, she's a, she's a good little kitty. She's very loyal. Somehow she, she hears certain things. Not everything though. She's really easy to spook. Uh, yeah, you can walk right up on her. She'll never have any idea and then you know you touch her or you get too close and then she jumps But 
she's a good kitty. So the driveway out here, we, my old driveway came up to, I forget how far it came out. Uh, I'm trying to remember, sorry. I think it came all the way up to these steps, if I remember right. And dug all the old junk out of there and then laid it back down. And then we extended it. I think I made it a little wider too. Yeah, because it had a huge low spot here. And uh, it used to not go all the way out to the, to the edge of the, the edge of the gate there so bringing it out leveling everything out makes it a little wider better for trailers coming in and out and then we made this road to go all the way out to the shop and if anybody remembers my shop was grass all the way up to the walls which i've never liked at all so we now have parking spots on gravel which is a lot nicer for parking cars and uh well, obviously trailers like we got over there. Once I'm uh, using as much of this gravel as I can, then I'm gonna move the truck back over here probably. Trailer I would like to keep over there so I can actually use it as kind of like an outdoor workbench in a way. So it's kind of nice over there in the corner. Uh, ideally, I think the truck would be cooler to sit over here in front of the shop and then you just have the trailer on the side, but we'll see how all that goes later on. Uh, yeah, so we got enough room to park a few cars. Here's a quick little update on you. So here was another pile of sod that got cleaned up. And that is the rototiller from the previous videos. And you can see that it is well used now. And I have not had a problem with it. Besides the carburetor, uh, I basically have to run it on half choke, but it never dies. It just kind of runs a little rough but it doesn't barely bogs down or anything so it's got plenty of power runs good so i will give it some more love later on but yeah it's working great i like it oh uh, let's see i mentioned this was a pile of sod that is now gone that is my other pile of sod along with old piles of dirt that i've had there previously and uh i need to get all that out here next soon too i'm gonna to dump all that back in the in the track area and just to get it out of here i'm i'm tired of seeing it there and the piles of dirt that all the grass are growing on have actually been there for several years now and i got it for free i was just going to use it for fill dirt because that's all it's good for it's full of rocks and stuff but yeah we'll just dump it back in the track area uh, you can see the tractor has been getting well used it is very dirty Poor thing, it needs some maintenance bad. It's due for a, a major maintenance, I think. So it's it's been rained on a couple times, but you can just see how how thick this is. That's funny, that's how much dust just collects on this thing and then actually falls off on its own. Is I drew a heart on there because <laughs> I was taking a random picture with the little Mahindra logo and stuff. I drew that on there like two days ago and already it's almost completely covered so yeah she's gonna get a good bath and some major maintenance once we're done here soon but it is working out great I haven't had any problems when I first started the project the fuel shutoff solenoid was acting up which was kind of weird um, and so I ordered another one but the one that's on there didn't act up again so I don't know I don't get it but I have a spare just in case, but uh, we're good to go. And there was some more piles of sod over here that got Roberto tilled up and filled into low spots. And then this here was also a huge pile of sod. And uh, I just kind of lessened this slope that was already here, filled it all in and yeah, it's doing great now. Uh, previously, last video, last week, we talked about this trailer so now you can actually see what we're talking about here. So this is the old trailer that me and Pearson BA350 have been using for years. Uh, structurally, it's great. There's nothing wrong with the metal. It's not rotted out. The suspension works good. But you can see the tires are completely, basically shot. They're done. Uh, let's see if we can get close-ups here. You can see the sidewalls are getting pretty rotted out. And uh, they leak. I always have to fill them up before I use it. Uh, the tires are a little too big. They rub when you put a big load on it and br 
Pearson BA350 actually almost lost a tire. It was smoking so bad when he towed his uh, Jimmy out of here. I think the tire was over here. Yeah, this is the tire. It must be on the inside, on the back side there. Uh, it was wearing through the sidewall and it was smoking like crazy. It was rubbing on the inside of the fender uh, just because it was overloaded, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so that's why the spare wheel is on it now, but I have ordered up new wheels and tires for this trailer. So we'll have fresh wheels and tires. They won't leak. And I actually upgraded to load range D, just a little peace of mind. And it wasn't that much more to upgrade a little bit. Oh yeah, seltzer. Mm, static water. And uh, yeah, so... Wheels and tires. My next step will be to pull all these wheels and tires off. This old one, obviously. And uh, I gotta get into all the brakes on this because I want to make the brakes operational. Uh, worst case scenario, Napa Auto Parts sells full brake assemblies that basically pull everything off. And then these things can just bolt right back on. $160 a pair. So that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, what's in there actually works, but the wiring is just shot. I've never messed with it, so... I don't know. We got to get we got to dig into it and see. I know this has had this is mostly why these brakes don't work at all probably is I believe this is the old uh, breakaway uh brake deal. I don't know how they work. I I, I don't know. I, I I don't know how this little guy works here. Normally they're a bigger box. I think they have a little battery in it. So but this definitely has the breakaway deal. So this hodgepodge could be the reason that the brakes don't work. I don't know. Uh, I've never messed with it. And uh, we are going to figure that out this time. So I might actually end up buying a, a breakaway box for it too then at that point. We'll see. I don't, it looked like they were a couple hundred bucks. You might have noticed this set of axles that are sitting on the trailer. This is... Uh, a big deal for me so these axles are going to go under my chevy so my 82 chevy k30 which is already a one ton truck does not have the proper front axle under it the way i bought it because somebody swapped it out so i don't know if they were trying to rip me off or the guy that i bought it from just had no idea but these are special axles so this is a dana 60 front end you can see it's got the king pins and it's got a huge pumpkin when it's almost the same size as a 14 bolt rear end then you know you got a you got a big boy uh, these axles came out of a cucv or a cuck v or whatever they like to call it um, so these have the 456 gears already in it and that rear 14 bolt there has a detroit locker already in it so geared and locked these are ready to be basically thrown into my truck and these came with brand new hubs on them too, which is kind of sweet. Uh, I think maybe this is a factory piece because the the plastic is a factory one, I believe. The plastic, uh, it's a worn hub, but it just has plastic caps on the end. Yeah, because this one's got a brake on it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, just like that. Um, yeah, so I'll go through all the brakes on these and make sure everything's good and and throw these in but uh that whole chevy project is going to be more than just putting these axles in i'm going to do a lift i'm going to do big wheels and tires on it it's going to be a mud truck so uh, hopefully you guys have some interest in that and uh, that'll be kind of fun to do so that's what i want to do probably this winter this it'll probably be one of the winter projects that and the fair lane i gotta start making progress on so um I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to talk about out here. So, yeah, I'm going to go finish off that drink and edit this up. And I got to go to work early in the morning still. So, hope you all uh, have a good one.